Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today is week 17 of the Stash Buster block series and the block we're doing today is called square and half square and this is what it looks like. I did this one in two colors. Of course you can change the colors around however you want. Um, we have half square triangles and four patches in one single patch. So I'm going to adjust the camera and show you the pieces that you need to make this block. Now we have a lot of pieces in this block as you can see and but there's there's simple units we're going to make two simple simple units we do the four patch and the half square triangle and that's all there is to this block so what we're going to need uh, for the background you'll need one square that is four and a half inches and then you'll need two squares that are four and seven eighths inch and you'll need eight two and a half inch squares and then for your darks you will need two four and seven eighths inch squares and eight two and a half inch squares so not a lot of the difference in the sizes so there's just uh, you know three sizes we got the four and seven eighths the four and a half and the um, two and a half inch so that's all we need and let's start with the half square triangles first and to do that we're going to take the four and seven eighths inch squares and draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of that fabric and just use any straight line or straight edge that you have this is a um, circle template that I'm using and uh, I'm just using the straight edge on that and you can use a pencil like I'm doing you can use a, an ink pen you can use a friction pen a water soluble marker an air soluble marker whatever you want because this is going to be a cutting line and it's going to be a guide for um, a seam line so what we're going to do is stitch one quarter inch away from both sides of these lines so we're going to pair that up with the dark fabric the dark four and seven eighths inch fabrics so right sides together and I'm just going to get both of mine set and ready to go and then we're going to stitch a quarter inch away on both sides of this line if you were stitching a whole quilt full of these blocks you may want to use a different method to make your half square triangles uh, but this works well for me when I'm just doing a block or two at a time so this is the method that I use okay my thread or my stitch length is at 2.5 which is just a standard stitch length and I'm using a 50 weight polyester thread by Superior it's the so fine uh, line of thread and I have that in the needle and in the bobbin so there is one and also if you use leaders and enders Um, that's a good thing to use on these I have tried leaders and enders and I just never got in the habit of using them consistently so most of the time I don't use them I don't have anything against them I just um, just really don't use them for some reason So next thing I need to do is just to cut these in half and I'm just going to do that with my regular shears and just cut right along that drawn line and that gives me two half square triangles with each set 
Okay, now we're going to press these open. And we're going to press them to the dark side. But while I'm still here at the sewing machine, um, I'm going to go ahead and sew the two and a half inch squares together. And what I'm doing is I'm going to sew one white to, to a dark. So that's all we have to do. So I'm just going to line them up and just sew them all in a chain. And that'll be the first step of this. And then we'll do the pressing for everything all at once. And this will go pretty fast. The hardest thing is getting the squares separated. So when you cut them in with several layers at a time, they like to stick together and fabric just likes to cling to itself anyway, so. Okay, now let's go do some pressing. Okay, for my half square triangles, I just want to press those towards the dark side. So I'm gonna lay the dark side up and then press it, press the seam, and then press it open. And you can use steam if you want, or you can use a dry iron, whichever way you like. I'm just going to stack those all up. Now I have my stack of those, and so now we're going to work on these. Now you can lay these in a chain if you want, but we're going to have to come apart to do the second part of the sewing on these. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them apart now, and then press them. There we go. And once again, I'm going to press towards the dark side, so I'll leave that side up. And then I'll just press the same way I did with the half square triangles and just make a stack of them. And you should have eight of these. And I hope you are all doing well. And hope you're tolerating any restrictions that you are under at the moment. If you're under quarantine or voluntarily or not. Okay. Next thing I want to do which isn't necessary, but something I like to do is I like to cut off the little dog ears here that form when you make these half square triangles. Um, they just add extra bulk. They don't serve any purpose. And sometimes they uh, kind of get in the way, so I like to just trim them off. And you can do it like this with scissors or if you want to square up your blocks. Um, because these should now be four and a half inch blocks. So if you want to square them up with a ruler, you can cut those little dog ears off at that point. Okay, so next thing I need to do is to make four patches out of these. So 
um, we're going to match them up like this to make the four patch unit. So I'm just going to make a whole line of these and just sew them together. And it doesn't matter which side you sew on because it's going to look the same however you turn it. So uh, I've got my four ready to go in the sewing machine and uh, we'll get to that part. Um, what I need to do is to butt my edges up. So what that means is since the um, seam is folded towards the dark side on both of these, the seams are now facing opposite directions. So that creates a little ledge on the dark side and those two um, fabrics should just kind of lock in together. Uh, we call it nesting. So they should nest right in there. And that way when you stitch it, there should not be any space between them and they should not be overlapped. And I'm going to sew these just one right after the other and um, keep them chained together. So this is another area where I'm going to be chain piecing. Okay, now I'm going to cut these apart and then press them open and then we'll be ready to assemble our block. Okay, for these it doesn't matter which direction you press them because they're going to look the same from both sides. Um, so there's no way to avoid having a dark fabric show through because no matter which direction you press them it's going to be a dark fabric so it's shining through a white so it doesn't matter so don't uh, worry about that and get this one open and I do have my steam running right now so that helps them lay a little flatter, I think. Okay, now we can put the block together. And this four and a half inch white square goes in the middle. And then the, half, the uh, four patches, the way they're going to be positioned is there's going to be the white ones are going to be facing the center. Um, so you can put all of those out first if you want, or you can just do it row by row however you want but that's just one little tip is that all the white should be facing towards the center you don't want it like that you want it like this and now the, your half square triangles you set them kind of like you do in a friendship block or a pinwheel block they go like this Now some pinwheel blocks and stuff may go this direction. It would be, see now I'm confused. It would be like that, but we're doing, we're doing this. I'm not gonna confuse, I'm gonna confuse myself if I follow through that, so. So there we go. This is the square, half square block. Now if you'd like um, to do your four patches a different color than this, you know, that would be great. You know, just do, however you feel you want your block to look. Next thing I need to do is just to sew all of these units into rows and then I'll sew all the rows together and then the block will be done. Okay, I'm going to start with the top row and you can sew these um, row by row. You can um, chain piece these together which I have done. Okay, those are the first two units in the first row. And here are the first two units in the second row. And I'm just picking them off of my ironing surface there. 
I haven't moved the whole block. I just picking up the pieces that I need to sew. Okay, and here are the next, the first two pieces in the third row. I get my edges lined up. my table. Okay, um, now I'm just going to add the third piece onto each row. Open that one up and add its last piece. piece onto this row. Okay, now all the rows are sewn and then we need to sew the rows together. So I'm going to take this over to the ironing surface and we need to do some pressing. Okay, you can leave these all chained together to finish this up if you want to or you can um, take them apart. Now I'm going to go ahead and take them apart because I want to cut them apart I guess I should say because it gives me a little more room to manipulate them when I'm sewing them together. So I'm going to cut those apart and since we have these half square triangles and we want to have a nice point here when we sew these rows together I'm going to press the seam here to away from the half square triangle so that would be towards the four patch units and I'll do that for all of the rows now these the four patch units are on the outside we're going so we're going to press this towards the center and then this last row, we'll press it just like we did the first row and press it out. So what I have here, now I can see where my stitching is crossing right here, this line, and this line of stitching is crossing and I can see that. And what I want to do when I sew these rows together is where those two lines cross and I'm going to be stitching across, I want to go just right above that area where they cross. That will help preserve the point. Okay, so I'm going to sew these first two rows together and I'm going to butt up the seams like I did with the four patches and then sew down. Now, since I can only see one at a time, I can just hope I am in good alignment and stitch it that way, or I could stitch this half from that side, flip it over, and stitch that half. It, it doesn't matter how we want to do it. Another thing you can do is also measure to see how far in that point is. If you are, see I'm right at a quarter inch, so I think I'm just going to let that stay at the bottom and do this all at once. So if I keep my quarter inch seam allowance then I should hit that okay. And I'm going to make sure 
my next seam is all lined up. And then I can watch that point. Make sure I go just right above that stitching and then come on through. Okay, let's take a look at that and see if I did a good job or if I'm going to have to re-sew it. Oh, not too bad. Okay, um, points look pretty good to me. So um, I'm going to add the last row. And I'm going to check the measurement on this one again too. And that's right at a quarter inch too, so we're doing good. One thing that helps is having a quarter inch piecing foot and having a thinner thread like this 50 weight thread. Um, it doesn't take up as much space in your seam, so it's easier to get more accurate measurements, more accurate piecing. So all of that helps. press this block open and take a look at it. Okay, now it doesn't matter which way you press this block at this point. However you want to uh, is, is fine. I um, think I'm going to press it towards the four patches. Um, see if it'll, it'll do that for me without too much trouble. And the reason I'm doing that is I can see the points in the block a little bit better that way. If I press it the other direction, it, it may be harder to see them. I think that looks pretty good. And this is our square and half square block. And I did this one in two colors. Of course, you can use whatever color you want. You can change colors around, use multiple colors, you know, whatever you like. That's what scrap quilting is all about. My furnace is about to come on, so I wanted to hurry up and get this in. But I wanted to thank you for uh, sticking with me through this series so far. And I hope you enjoyed this video on the square and half square block. And I hope you will stay safe and stay healthy and hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.